we deliver a talk on adaptation of immersed boundary matter for solving large scale computation of complex industrial flows so the outline of my presentation will be follows first i discuss about the conventional numerical simulation and uh, highlight the challenges of conventional numerical simulation and then present a case ki why immersed boundary matter which is um a, which is a non conforming boundary progress. matter will be a one way to overcome the challenges of numerical simulation that is being occurred or someone faces or come across during the conventional numerical simulation and then uh let it to be industrial scale simulation and find out what are what what sort of a challenge challenges we face and how to circumvent it so before we begin let's look into the first a general scientific approach so anything when we wanted to go for the scientifically approach wanted to study we have physical real life problem in our hand and then either we can go for study the experimental way where we set up the experiment and perform experimentation which is very familiarly known as experimental fluid dynamics but there are own limitations sometimes even then if we wanted to the experiment but we cannot do it for example if you wanted to study how the blood flows in our veins we cannot go for the experiment then in the this situations one of the way is to convert the physical real life problem in terms of mathematical equations so that uh, which is basically consist of partial differential equations integral equation and algebraic and we try to solve the analytical fluid dynamics but there are the case uh, range of a problems we cannot solve analytically and we choose to go with the computational fluid dynamics or we can say we are using the scientific computations but one things here which is important to note that in the experiment the the computational time means like the experimentation time and the physical time will be same analytical time if we come across the uh, generalized equations and respective solution the solution will be fast but as we go to the computational fluid dynamics which on uh, during which we find out the solution at the discrete points we are need of a very higher amount of computational overhead and maybe the computational time is much much larger than the physical time it may be possible that 2 second will required you 11 days to simulate it so keeping this in mind what happened at the beginning when people started with the computational fluid dynamics the fluid mechanics and mathematics comes together and leads to a path of a cfd and then gradually in upcoming slides we will look into it that there is a one more section of a uh, academics will be required to complete our aspiration which will be the computer science engineering which we look into later stage so if it comes to the cfd let's uh, begin with the conventional numerical simulation which is also known as the body conforming grade method what does it mean let's suppose we have a heated element and we wanted to study its effect on the surrounding a very common problem and if we have to do even then analytical solutions are available but if let's suppose i wanted to solve the numerically so what it needed the first i have to generate a curve which is exactly fitting to the body and considering this as a boundary conditions we make the discrete point which is nothing but this, uh, the intersection of x y z point which is called the grid and once grid is generated we solve the governing equation in each of the cells and find out the solution but as soon as this go to the real life problem the geometry which is under consideration will become very very much complicated and itself generating the grid to conformal to the boundary is a very big challenge which leads the people to think the other way through which the grid generation become the easy and why it is a difficult so basically if you look into the grid generations are based on the algebraic method 
partial diffusion silication methods or conformal mapping uh, or conformal mapping sorts of thing but this is also if you go with the complex shapes con body conformal grips have a very high amount of bottlenecks because as the complexity grows you have to move towards the partial differential equation based uh, model to generate the grip which takes a lots of time they are because they are computationally expensive because they involve the large iterative uh, iterative solution of large equation system and in this also achieving the better grid quality and smoothness are always be a challenge and one of the most important point that nowadays people wanted to look into the moving boundaries flow like the flapping of a wings doesn't means that the earlier scientists doesn't have a aspiration for those things but due to the computational less computational advancement they are very much restricted their study about the fixed body method or ad hoc solutions uh, uh, some quasi static flow that the flapping of fixed over 0 degree 5 degree and 45 degree and then so and so and they finding out the solutions but if we go with the moving body method in a in a purview of body conformal grid method the grid generated with also effort is null and void in the next time step and updating the maze required the significant cpu time sometimes is so high that the earlier people let it go that uh, we cannot solve it as per the recent advancement in the moving flows but now where the uh, the higher end of computational uh, uh, frameworks are available now it's a will possible for it so and and these are more become complicated uh because as the complexity is grows we will go with the triangular mesings uh, for better fitting all those things this unstructured or hybrid grid generation will involves a lots of complexities one of these things this are involved the delaune triangulation bowyer algorithm which are very much computational expensive and complicated and it required intricate mathematics for it and other than that they are come come with the separate connectivity tables so it will required your computational overhead so the it's a, the comp, the ram size will keep in increasing and most important the orthogonality is not ensured which will highly compromise your solutions and other things if you write the code for yourself or those who are writing the code for your commercial software they finding the coding complexities increases by leaps and bounds so in this context uh, first be, before going into this one ki what we can summarize that issue in solving large complex problems will be of three category one is the grid generation second is the computational expense and the third will be leads to a turbulence modeling although we the more we model the more error we are including the idea will be go to the dynamic numerical simulation uh, sorry direct numerical simulations but due to the computational limitations we always wanted to reduce the computational expenses by using the appropriate turbulence models so in this context what people find it out they come across with an idea of immersed boundary method what it say that the cartesian volume grid would be generated with no regard to the boundary what does it means it's a totally opposite let's suppose if we have Uh, this arbitrary geometry over which we wanted to find out the flow patterns so what we did that we generate the cartesian grid which is very easy to generate without uh, including any much complexities and immerse the geometry into it so as we can see it that we come across and let's suppose as of now uh, you believe that we have to find it out some ways to find out the interface boundaries if you look from the coding uh, perspective only the floor and sill will give you uh, the uh, the interface nodes and once we have interface nodes let's suppose we are able to find it out the inside and outside and if we find that all the four nodes of this cell is out if we find out the cells which is a composition of inside and outside we call it the intercepted cell 
and if we find out all the nodes of a cell is inside it we call the solid nodes and within this uh, there are the terminologies related with the immerse boundary method which is very much important to before we one understand the immerse boundary method so there are the something we call it a uh, immerse nodes and the ghost node the solid part of the intercepted cell are called the ghost nodes and the fluid nodes of the intercepted cells are called the immerse nodes so what is the issue so if you look into that uh, the tracking of a surface we have not exactly traced the geometry exactly in the exactly as we intended and if we let the flow to pass over this body the solution will be quite different from the intended one and this solution have a lots of any issue where at the industrial scale or the real life application this is solutions have doesn't have any meaning so what we did in a merge boundary method the actual boundary is mimicked using the forcing function and if we have implement the forcing function which recreate the surface exactly oh, like the surface over which the simulation is intended then the purpose is solved this is equivalent to the body conformal grid method and this forcing functions are called the reconstruction scheme and the way reconstruction scheme is implemented will leads to a different immerse boundary method and the one most important uh, aspect of immerse boundary method or you call the uh, the highlight or the advantage of immerse boundary method even then the when the geometry moves or we are dealing with the moving boundary flows the grid it is static grid is remain same what is changing only you need to change the tagging there may be the possibility which is the solid somewhere will come to the outside so the interfacing will be only changed which is equivalent to the grid generation or remessing for the moving boundary flows which is much faster than respective conformal boundary grid method so just to show you the uh, this is important ki how much time benefit it can offer you immerse boundary method i'm citing one example of ansysync which is very much well known in the computational domain so they intended to solve the solution of uh, 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 simulation over a uh, yes over lorry mo vehicle and they go for the conventional um, grid method where the the grid is uh, conformal to body grid methods and look at the times they needed if you look at the geometric clean up surface mesh and the volumetric mesh it required 24.5 hours and if we go with the immerse boundary method geometric clean up is not required surface mesh is not required even then if you directly go for the volume mesh it will require 0.25 hours so in comparison to 24.5 hours you are only doing less than a 30 minute uh, to know for the achieving the same quality of results the number of the mesh count is increased but people find out even then this increases the solution is fast because the in this one uh, the orthogonality is maintained and the, the the convergence of solution is very much fast so this increase in the cell is is a, not a problem the from the point that the, we getting the advantage of using the immerse boundary method so if you look into that the earlier we not discuss how to do the inside and outside so the idea is that let's suppose this is the geometry and this is immersed in a uh, cartesian grid so what we do that this geometry over which we able generally is being represented uh, by if you look at the any cat tools with some points so if we know that and it's being element and element if we able wanted to find out this element is inside and outside first we identify which is the closest element to uh, this node is uh, which is one of the closest element with respect to this nodes and if we able to find it out closest element is normal is known and if we put the position vector and take the dot product and it's quite 
from the mathematical point of view, if it's the dot product is greater than or equal to zero, we can say that it's a outside or on the body. And if we find out it is less than zero, it means it's opposite negative. It's inside the body. So by using this, we can find it out inside and outside. Why I'm calling the closest triangular element? Because when we go for uh, 3D body simulations, we mess over the body in the STL. Basically, this is nothing but triangular mess. And each triangular mess using its two arm, the normal can be find it out using the cross product and the position vector just with the centroid of that element with the respective point can be find it out. And then we can apply the dot product. And if you find out it is greater than zero, we call it outside. If it is less than zero, we call this inside. And in the code, it looks like this way. So there is a one uh, geometry which is generated in a CAD file. It will pass to the codes and in emerge boundary meter, the Cartesian grade is generated, which is very too easy to generate. And when both are linked, it, the inside and outside are find it out. So the idea is very good. What people basically is the problem is this one. They, since it is at the interface, it's like the step. Violation of a geometrical conservation law. And if geometry is not correct, the, what you find out, basically you are saying the area or volume is less or more than an actual value. And if there are the mass uh, conservation issues, the error in heat transfer calculation will also be will be come into the picture and an error in the mixing calculation will also in the mix property problem. And moreover, if you go for finding out such uh, dynamic forces like the drag and the lift, because the mass is not properly conserved, it cannot be implemented to the fluid in structure interaction problem also, where immerse boundary method is uh, considered to be one of the potentials, right? So why this is happening? Because they simply find it out uh, when we go for the projection methods, uh, there, uh, the Poisson equations, the del square P, where the uh, pressure correction equation is directly dependent upon the divergence. And the improper mass conservation lead to the spurious pressure fluctuations and say it say that it cannot be implemented for any practical uh, moving body simulations where the drag and lifts are very much important. So under this situations, uh, people find out the many solutions, but this talk is, uh, talk is not intended for this one. So I'm giving you that someone come up with an idea that has merged this, the intercepted cell with the uh, regular cells, but this is converting into somehow of a conformal body grid method. But if you go with the different geometry, there are n number of possibility come into the picture and people completely uh, do away with this principle because their solutions are ad hoc. So in this regard, uh, uh, I propose the one of this, the Mac Sola solver. Mac is the uh, Mac is and Sola are the both are the legendary uh, uh, means like so algorithm for solving the fluid falling problem. And here what we do that it combo, uh, both are combined. It's a hybrid of a Mac and Sola is utilized to take the simplicity of immersed boundary method. What this reconstruction schemes uh, presented that does not require denting and merging of the cell like this one, which people find it the complexities and don't want it to pursue further in this one. And it provide much simplicity for solving the moving boundary problems. How? So what we did, that's apply the MAC in a non-intercepted cell and SOLA in an intercepted cell. What does it mean? In a, a very quick look, I'm just giving into it. So what SOLA assumes that the, if, you, if you add the boundaries, if you add the boundaries, there are, if you look into the stencil, there will be the I plus one is the solid part. So basically there is a no pressure or the volume, uh, the velocities are available. They are the fixiest, all those things, because they're solid. If you're finding out you wanted to in simulate the flow over the solid bodies. So what it assumes, Sola, ki the solution in the neighboring cells are correct. And if you look into the, uh, the pressure correct, uh, in the projection method, you come across the pressure correcting, uh, correction terms and the velocity correction terms. If you look into with this methodology, the pressure correction terms is only dependent upon the cell size and the divergence. And if, if you look into this intercepted cells also, at least we can represent, uh, we can reconstruct the velocity on the 
fluid cells also and the ghost node also using the simple uh, quadratic equations also and where in the solid cell it's represent the fixed fluid which stopping the fluid to come inside and the boundary conditions are exactly repeated so this is the one of the good things and where if you go for the far away already the all the stencils are available we go as it is and we are trying to assure the more correctness of the solution by not including into the assumption that the pressure or the solution in the membrane cells are correct okay so by this one we come across this pressure and velocity correction terms that we utilize for uh, solving the momentum equations uh, which couple the continuity equation and momentum equations so this is the one of the part of emerge boundary method and here i am showing ki how those solution reconstruction schemes are presented so look how the solution reconstruction scheme means that the boundary conditions the, the uh, should be implemented in exact nature in which it was to be intended so this always if you look into the partial differential equation it's are the boundary value problem and if it is a uh, time dependent then it's a initial value problem so boundary condition it's a compulsory things you have to have so if you go with this one exactly at this position the boundary condition is known to me i'm looking for this one and these are the first during the initialization this solution is known to me so if i apply the quadratic equations it's required me the three point to find out the coefficient of a b and c so iteratively we can find out the solution at emerge nodes also and ghost node also and if we have the value of emerge node and ghost nodes i can implement the divergence in the intercepted cell also and which previously the pressure correction terms can be suffixed so this is how the solution is reconstructed and coupled with the solving in the navier stokes equation in line with the mac and sola or you can say the methods like the uh, simple which is say the implicit pressure linked equations or also there are the other variants simplex or simpler so the solution as reconstructed in this scheme at the both of the faces so we keep it the a cartesian grid into the cartesian grid there is no denting and venting is required and for since the overall code is second order accuracy so we using the uh, uh, quadratic equation we are able to maintain the second order accuracy and just to show the capabilities uh, whether it's a cap uh, capable or not because uh, initially there are uh, the fluctuations are associated with this one when the mac and sola is implemented the black dot representing it's very smooth and just to uh, just this uh, just uh, uh, just let me check uh, so this simulations are not working so so just this simulations are meant for only just to showing uh it is continuously falling and you will find out there are no these are the pressure contours so there are just fluctuations in between so if you look into it if you look into the with present scheme then in the terms of time also you able to reduce by the 50 times and we able to capture uh the problems like uh, dynamic stall also this is the experimental one this is the present ibm which is giving this one and exactly they are capturing the dynamic able to dynamic stall and we able to uh, find out it's a lift and drag very much close to the experimental one which is quite acceptable into this field and it's also able to solve the problem on the uh, the wavy channels where it's a very much implementation in real life problems we also implement the continuous castings and the problem uh, uh, this this should run so if i time permits i let you in a separately so these are what i am solving uh, the moving indentation wall which is which is equivalent to solving a flow in a artery where the walls are having the palpitations or it's a palpitating or it's oscillating so under those conditions we have represented uh, with the 
uh, flow through the indenting walls and we compare with the experimental results and the flow the movement of eddies are exactly are very much close to the their experimental results and all those things they are showing the capabilities that they are uh, even then just like a, a real life problems where we have a cardiovascular problems where the plaque is deposited on the nerves uh, on the arteries when we look into it uh, the flow becomes a very much a turbulent that all those things are become very problematic which is also known as the atherosclerosis we try to simply simulate it and these are all our 3d domains and which a large number of uh, um, your grid sizes so overall what is it means that they are quite capable for solving the real life problems but still at the first stage we are doing at a very much like a academic scale but when you go for the real life biological flow problems you will find out the arteries are mostly skewed in a geometry and if you immerse in a cartesian grid you can see it the white area is much much higher than the shaded region then the shaded region if you look from this perspective there are the very much redundant nodes which are not participating in the simulations even then at the beginning stage if you do the fnls the solutions are not going to be carried over it but takes a lots of time we will identify it when we go for the real life problem there is a very much high so under this situation what people earlier suggested that okay you convert it's a very manual process just looking into this geometry manually you put the blocks accordingly and they use the parallel programming accordingly each uh, grid is being passed to the one of the processor but this is only again is required the very manual input one people have to look into the what kind of a geometry and at the beginning it takes a lots of time so someone come up with an, an idea ki okay why not to go with a coming with an array which convert the structured array into the unstructured one so only the simulation need to be done into without an if and else condition 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 7 8 9 10 11 12 so there are redundant nodes are not available the logical operation are not available and the simulation is quite fast so the redundant that the redundancy is being removed but again if you look into there are the time involved unnecessary converting the structure array into the unstructured and back to the unstructured into the structure array so just what i come with an idea that a very simple one ki why not to list down all those nodes at the time of tag, tagging itself in a file and instead of running the loop over the do i to j you just run on the run the loops of the of the moment solving the momentum equation with the numbers listed on this file itself and this will give me uh, this we by using this imp simple implementation i do away with uh, uh, involving the if else conditions again and again we do away with uh, 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 including the concept of structured array and unstructured array and do away with the very much manual input so at the time of a tagging which is the at, uh, at the immerse in the, uh, the very much needed part at the time this one only we listed in the files and the do loops is being implemented and this give a very higher order of uh this one uh, in terms of computational performance in terms of time what is problem like the uh, just like is i'm showing the example of uh, flapping of a butterfly uh so when we try to simulate like this one what happened that even then if you go with the bounding box the bounding box will takes a lots of time to retag it so if you go for the industrial application even then which is the academic scale which time is not noticeable but in a real scale it has become a very much a point of concern so there is an, an idea so all the nodes it is doesn't require the bounding box even then only the uh, only uh, because there is a one point where you have to implement ki the 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 shape of the body should not move in a single time step move from one more than one cells in a single time step 
it's just like uh, it's called the cfl law it's implemented over its movement of the geometry also so under this conditions only the surrounding nodes which is considered to be a merged uh, intercepted cells can only change the status of its nodes it can come to the fluid nodes or the solid nodes so if we able to find out the band over it instead of doing the bounding works this white number of the white number of a nodes can be excluded only the operation need to be done on this seeded which is represented by the blue seeded so the again when the number of operation is reduced the computational time will also decrease so sometimes what we find out that the only the retagging is taking much more time than the solving the momentum equations so if we implement it this ones the time is further reduced by 15 times and that is huge that is huge so if you looking in the moving bodies problems in any case instead of uh, uh, using the bounding box one should go for in a thing which uh, which only limited to the nodes which have a potential to change its status from fluid to solid and again when we go for uh, moving from the academy to this the another challenge is what we come across the size of a computational domain so just try, uh, i'm trying to explain with this simple example uh, uh, one of the we take an example of a flow through the arteries uh, where this three dimensional geometry is uh, let's suppose we have a 10 to the power 10 grid points which is very common in a 3d simulation what does it means there are some angular tangential angular momentum are screen bas kya hai 5 hello so if you look into it if a one time iteration will need what you have to go the order of 10 to the power train floating point operations and typical time steps looking considering of a cfl will be the 10 to the power minus 3 seconds if even then if i'm considering my solver is very much of a good one very good one very much uh, flexible under those conditions the simulations will need the 10 to the power total 14 flop if i am going over the only 10 to the power minus 3 seconds only and assuming that the we have the fastest computer to give the 10 giga flop per second speed the estimated time for this calculation theoretically will be 277 hours which is the 11.5 days which is quite significant and a at the same time if you look at the matrix size which is in terms of in the ram requirement look this number is very a larger size which again become a problem from the hardware size so what is the solution so we coming to the uh, very uh, simply speaking this type of simulations cannot be done in a in a mode of a serial codes or in by the help of only one cpu so here what people come to the conclusion that okay earlier we have making a um, a friendship with the mathematics now it's a time to integrate the computer science aspects also which is called the high performance computing and this is called the parallel computing so what we are doing we distributing the cfd job among the many computers how it helps so what does it means when we are finding out the load memory which is too heavy to carry and the task will take astronomically long time which we uh, see in the previous slide we need to have to have go for the parallelization and what does it means we are using the multiple cpus to solve the same problem so if by simply in means let's suppose we have this 1d problem so we distributed this job into the three cpus but as soon as we do it because we know that all the partial differential equations are uh, limited with the boundary condition if it is a 1d we need the boundary condition at 1 and 30 but as soon as we make a division we need we have created the artificial boundary condition which is represented by 6 5 10 and 9 which is not known so only the boundary condition which is implemented are true at 1 and 30 so what is required there are the 
at every iteration there is a requirement of transfer of data from one processor to another so the, there is a required a communication and communication will take time this and the communication how the communication will be done so globally there is a standard which is known as the mpi which is the message part passing interface they are very simple if you understand the concept it's very much easy ki you have to something broadcast you have to some receive the data some you have to send the data this is only required where the very basic commands are given and in exactly in that format you have to pass the data only thing what is required in an mpi a person himself or herself should be responsible for the domain decomposition how you are decomposing the domain whether required a two or three depending upon whether you are going to get the computational benefit or not because at the times when the transfer of data only let, takes a lots of time then solving itself in a single computer then we should not go for it and this is known as the scalability so in this context also ibm offers the better compatibility for parallelization why because if there is a the hybrid mesh or the unstructured mesh the its domain decomposition will be a, a trickier one it required the very intricate one but in case of immersed boundary methods you can directly convert okay from this point to this i this j to this j this k to this k it's a very straight simple so extra operations which is not required then again from the point of parallelization also and con considering the industrial problems immersed boundary becomes once again winning the race in terms of conventional uh, bond, uh, body fitted grid simulation method and i am just giving an example with a, a 2d method of a heat conduction equations where you have the boundary condition of upper surface lower surface Uh, left and right is known so if we go with the four boundary conditions four domain decomposition look this boundary condition is can be implemented straight away this is known this is known only at this point our artificial one which is being suffixed by exchanging the data and what it helps so if you look into the each of the cell now the number of cells is decreases so the matrix size increases and since the job is being done by the four of the processor the time is also decreases so where we are coming to the earlier point whether we are coming to the such a situation where the ram ram size is quite astronomically high now can be doable with the help of using the many processors or many cpus which is available to Uh, available to us and at the same time the computer person computer science engineering giving an an option giving an a language to communicate with one processor to the another one and since now it's not done by the only one processor which are limited with the some gigahertz processing per second uh, which is if you go to the buying the laptop they say the 2.9 or 3.6 all are doing with a less number so time will increase but again one need to check it whether the problem is scalable or not like like we if we take a we wanted to uh, for example fibonacci series it cannot be parallelized so we can so all the uh, if you look into the uh, uh, code if you look into the numerical simulation of any realistic problem all the portion cannot be parallelized there are the portion which can be parallelized and there are the portion which you should not parallelize so what we do we do the scalability and we see if we increasing the processor whether the iteration per second is increasing or not so there are the ahmedel's law which say that after some times the latency will become a so higher that you are not going to get the betterment if you increase the number of processor and why this happens because overall you have to go through the load balancing the calculation in each domain synchronization Uh, the communication using the mpi and assembly of results and termination and there will be overhead due to initialization synchronization and communication which are not available in a serial uh, processing so there will be a time uh, 
uh, where, where you come to the position that this code can only be parallelized up to this number of a processor. So it doesn't mean if we have a say called the 120 cores are available for for the problems in hand, we go for the 120. There may be the possibility that the single core will give you the much faster. But when the times comes, we are dealing with the much higher number of nodes. Then judicially, you can utilize the parallel programming to solve it. And then when people go, when when we where, where we in a domain of uh, uh, where where the computation CFD is going for uh, exascale computation, peta scale computations, where the number of nodes is uh, quite high, people still not satisfied with the performance of these are called MPI and all this uh, level of a CPU, CPU programming, central processing unit. There are the point people now wanted to utilize the graphical processing unit, which most of the times we look into our the laptops, we have the graphics cards, which uh, help you to play the games better. And why? Because the, if you play any games at the X side, they are solving nothing but the matrix and all the simulation of engineering will be converted into AX equal to B. So quickly people identify the GPUs are not only for the animation and other things, but they are helpful for scientific computations also. Though, if you look into that in the GPU, it's have provided you slower clock speed in terms of a CPU, but still due to the greater bandwidth and massive multi-threading, the GPU is much popular in scientific computing to achieve the uh, the simulation with a very less time so there is a people's comes how they move so there are the first people come with the serial code and they started with uh, within the cpu level they use with the open accelerator which due to the new essence of the numerical uh, 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 process which is converted to exit view some of the uh, simply gpu using with the open accelerator can be quickly make the first step. And this implementation of your existing code into with the open SSC is uh, quite simple. Just you have to buy those app, uh, open accelerator uh, license and you have to add one line at the start and end and it's done. But the performance that you wanted to implement it, uh, wanted to achieve it may not be achieved by the open SSC. So what it's called, the GPU programming is also known as the CUDA programming, which is complete unified dynamic architecture. It's a very much uh, complicated one, but uh, because you have to create as many, many threads so that the simulation can be fast. So even in a single computer, it looks like you have the supercomputer because you can do with the multiple threads can be generated, which is represented by small, small dot in the right hand side of a CPU, right? So, but all the, uh, there is a one, uh, a statement will be given all the numerical algorithm you cannot pass to the GPU. You have to be very judicial which part of a code, which part of a numerical simulations, which part of a, um, a calculation need to be passed to the GPU because the GPU are very limited by, by the size. It's called a 1 TB, uh, 1 GB, 2 GB, 1 TB. And as you go with the higher side, you will find it out. The cost of GPU is very costly. So nowadays for achieving the application or real side uh, computational problems, uh, large scale computations, uh, there is a very much in uh, demand that hybrid form of uh, numerical simulation using the CPU and GPU. And what it needed that is every cycle is depends upon you write a code, you analyze it, find out the avenues for the parallelize and then optimize, right? We already did it and it's uh, presented in one of the paper. So if we go for, and for this one, how we identify, so there are the profilers are available. When your codes are available, we do look key where the most of the time, the code, where the most of the times in the code is being taking place for simulation. So. If you look into the, the you know, Navier-Stokes equation, the most of the equation will be taking the most of the time in a Poisson equations, surface tracking and momentum equations. These are the avenues. And when we go for the CPU and GPU, look, all the things are not being passed to the GPU level. 
imposition of boundary conditions i have not implemented in the gpu updating the velocities have not implemented in the gpu and the domain boundary conditions have not why because the gpu if some of the process which includes your logical operation you should not pass to the gpu you should not do the pass to the gpu you only keep it to the cpu so this is the time look mem copy host to device cpu to the gpu and then you have to back gpu to the cpu when you implement it 11.4% of time will be in, invested in a mem copy so you need to very much sure about it and when we analyze it and we parallelize look when we do this cycle look this is all together coming to the close to the 100% now the if we compare with this one and this one with the same profiler gprof and vprof we find out the opportunity that update updating velocity after a time step and domain uh, boundary conditions can be parallelized and when we parallelize it the time uh, time taken is coming to nil or very insignificant so this is what what does it means when you write a course you have to look the analyze look at the venues where it can be parallelized which one can be gone for the gpu which can be for the cpu then optimize it and then once again analyze it if you have done something unnecessary again it may be the possible instead of a time decrease it can increase so you have to go back using the profiler uh, make it the uh, do not do any things which is being at earlier stage and then go ahead and this is what i am giving you an example not only the only the uh, the coding framework or work but what type of a hardware is available is also important like as of now the nvidia a100 is the most sophisticated uh, uh, your gpu is available and if you look into that a100 which is 1.6 times faster than the v100 which is the predecessor of the a100 so even then if you looking for the hardware side you need to be very much uh, uh, choosy one key if you looking into the number of uh, uh, this things the nodes are label the, uh, the 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 size of a computational uh, domain what it is it's overall saying ki what is the order of a floating point operation you are solving accordingly you can see it if you go for the cpu time and gpu look the so 112 times speed up can be achieved so something is happening in a 112 days in a cpu can be achieved in a single one day and if you look into that when we are looking into the we have created a two different points static and a moving in all of the cases we are looking into that the time benefit we have uh, we are getting giving me the time benefit and one thing is very much important to know that ki why even then the mess point is increasing the speed up is increasing so the only up to the point if we are using the gpu at a optimized level till then it's a redundant so even then 8 million point is not able to suffice the fully to the cpu and gpu processor once it is being able to achieve the 100% of its its application and then when you increase the number of mess point then its speed up will just start decreasing okay so by this way we can identify that even then we are implementing the gpu and cpu may be the possibility we are not utilizing its full potential so when you utilize its full potential uh, there always will scope to increase your speed up in terms of computational time so uh, so there is a uh, the sense uh, this a uh, point is a uh, this talk is a only one hour just i quickly show you one of the problems when you implement it on industrial scale uh, of immersed boundary method because the tagging is dependent upon a normal dependent and when you go for the stl geometry and this is the legacy problem in the stl if you go through it it's a very uh, uh, means like a, a, a decade year problem that the normals are not correct look outside outside and inside and as soon as the normals are not correct your simulation is going to be wrong and second that whole of this simulation is depend upon the number of elements on the cad geometry and the number of a nodes which you have provided for the cartesian grid and larger the number of nodes 
even then if you go for the bounding box in the industrial scale problems they are quite high which will take a more cpu time and only people will go for the other option is a ray tracing techniques but uh, they find and there are others techniques also which they uh, which they reported to be computationally slow and and they found efficient from the point of parallel paradigm so in overall we will find out that the uh, that the concave and concave region of complex strain or geometry are particularly challenging to process with the existing process processes which is the one of the major bottleneck come into the image boundary method then what people comes to the conclusions that we wanted a marker schemes which should be a normal depend uh, should not be a normal dependent it should avoid the inherent challenges of ray tracing techniques it should be fast but at the same time accurate and should be able to handle multiple component of cat geometries multiple bodies because and earlier i saw you one of the problems that just giving an example if you keep working in this field how much time benefit one can achieve so earlier people started with 24.5 hours which is converted into the 0.25 hours and if you look at the number of 10 to the power 6 here and look at the scale here 10 to the power 6 can be achieved in less than a second also so the if you able to use the very good algorithm the time of a marking will can be drastically reduced which will help you in solving the moving body problems because most of the time people find it out that remessing or retagging take a significant amount of time in comparison to solving the momentum equations so basically this is what is needed and in just showing you example that is a must doable that even then if you wanted to us with a centrifugal pump we have a casing and an impeller the multi bodies can be can be used and this code i name it is a map to grid is a in house codes even then if you wanted to tag or a butterfly the red ones you can see that here this is by the immerse bond method so you can see that this all things very complicated geometry can also be then this is the which uh, for the benchmark problem people that the stanford dragon is being tagged with keeping all those features and even then if you go for the 10 to the power 9 more than 10 to the power 9 points only the 11 second 11 minutes sorry 11 minute is required to complete the 10 to the power 9 problems so it's a, which is the very less time very very less time and uh, the idea is very simple it's not very a uh, complicated one the coming from a very old algorithm available in uh, the computer science uh, students are very well known to this one because all those cartesian grids are nothing but bidirected graph if you take the clue of a uh, computer science things one and this this bodies need to be uh, find to be inside and outside now i'm when i put a bounding box i can find it out i can start with here which i can termed it as an outside and what i did once we have a four floor and sills i can find out the interface nodes let's say i identify with minus 1 tagging and call it for the uh, visual appearance is a orange color and i start with this one the white is first will be converted into the gray only once when we find out it's connected elements are with white before moving to the other two the other two connected white is converted into the gray and before moving to the next nodes i convert into the black same is doing by and given an id of 1 and go with recursively again and again and again and again at this stage if you look into it once it reaches into this point this successive operation will be closed this is being truncated so it will not go inside and once we will coming across it we find out the in internal nodes are identified and earlier which is given represented by orange color which is a minus 1 all this inside will be converted with the 
instead of the orange color with the id 0 so one is a minus 1 one is a 0 minus 1 will be converted into the green color and with this one without using the normal algorithm without using the number of elements considered into the stl geometry with the using the simple call white gray and black algorithm which is very much old algorithm available in the computer science algorithm the rendering of geometries can be done very much fast and very effectively in a cartesian gray so with this these are the these are the uh, with this i just say presentation in reference that if someone wanted to take the industrial scale problems with the immers boundary method one should look into the efficient marking algorithm and utilization of cpu and gpu from the perspective of parallel algorithm sir uh, thank you sir for it, for this uh, insightful presentation uh, so now the house is open for discussion if uh, from the participant side if anyone has any doubt they can ask your question maybe just i check it whether simulations is there any any participant if anyone has any doubt they can they can ask their question so till then just i'm trying to so, so these are the simulation which is not running so you can see even then it was just really falling body and the terminal was still exactly with the experimental the pressure there is no pressure fluctuation so the immersed boundary method is able to capture those fluctuation if the mac and solar are in the and these are mixing problem just showing the capability so and if you look into here uh, this so you can look these are the arterial problems where you can see this all things are possible in immersed boundary method and in house code can be generated so all features can be identified the dynamic the moving bodies also and the fixed body okay. from the from the audience side if anyone has any question they can ask their question to manish sir Uh, once again thank you sir for giving your valuable time in this uh, program okay so, now you can answer your question sir thank you sir thank you thank you nice time for our second talk of the day uh, the, this talk will be delivered by dr l hari on structural simulations using fpa industrial application so before starting his talk i will give a brief introduction about dr hari Uh, currently he is a modeling and simulation engineer at uh, Cameron Lumberjay Coimbatore uh, previously he also worked as a material specialist at MSC software that exclusively dealt with professional multi phase simulation software now coming to his academic background so dr hari has completed his doctoral degree from iit madras and a master degree from iit hyderabad and his btech degree from jntu anantpur so with this i would like to request dr harish sir uh, to please deliver his talk so over to you sir harish sir hi uh, hi uh, thank you thanks for the introduction uh, uh, and uh, let me share my screen uh, before 